uh, going to call to order the uh, meeting of uh, November 18th of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, we have a fairly light agenda tonight. Uh, the first thing is an Arlington 360 update and discussion. And I think we'll ask a few people to come forward. We've got Laura Wiener. We, that's my Brockton accent coming up. <laughs> Laura Wiener <laughs> coming uh, uh, from the planning department. And then Jake, if you want to come up, as well as, uh, I don't know, Rick, if, if you want to come up as well, or whatever else, we can grab you a chair. So, yeah, you can scoop one out of here. Here you go, Rick, if you don't mind, Jake. I'll just over. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Um, Laura, why don't you pick okay. us off? I will start with the, um, the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about was there are a couple of conditions that, does everybody have a copy of the memo? Yes. Okay. There's a couple of conditions that um, relate to the traffic signal at the <coughs> corner of Sims Road and Summer Street. Um, the, the condition says that we would um, look at a six months after occupancy roughly and hold $40,000 for adjustments. But um, it's not working very well right now, and we decide we all jointly felt that um, we should adjust it now and not wait six months. So um, we had a meeting with TAC, the developers engineers, not all of TAC, a couple of people who had been in the subcommittee, the developers engineer, who was somebody that um, was recommended by um, Jeff Max Tudis, who's a TAC member, who's kind of the most involved in transportation engineering. Um, and uh, Jake and Sandy Silk, and talked about the most effective way to do that, and coordinating that light with the, the Brattle Street light and the Cutter Hill Mill Street light. And um, I think it's fair to say everyone at the table felt like this was a better solution to get this proactive before um, the residents really start moving in and before uh, Brightview opens. But it requires changing the condition, or at least accepting um, that it's not meeting the condition as stated. The other piece of it was that we felt that it was, I mean, the developer requested and we thought it was fair that we, we might not need the $40,000 in escrow because if we make all the adjustments now, that, those are the things that cost money. Any minor tweaking that happens afterwards is something that, um, oh, I forgot to mention Wayne Chenard, the town yes, engineer, sir. was there and he felt like he, their, his department could handle it after. Can I fill in just a little bit of historical context to the whole thing? Um, so way back when the EIR was done, um, or the MEPA permit for uh, this whole SIMS project, that was done before the special permit process happened, and the traffic studies were done initially as part of the MEPA submission. And um, at the time, we did the the developer didn't know what the special permit densities were going to be, but needed to sort of cart before the horse needed to get the MEPA study done. So th there was an assumption, I think, I believe it was 290 units of residential housing on top of a 40 to 60,000 square foot medical office building that had a 126 car parking garage. That was the program that was assumed. <coughs> um, that program is very different than it is today, mm -hmm. uh, particularly from a traffic perspective, and I think we've reviewed that that difference with the board. But um, to to be overly simplistic, and there's peak times and everything, but but in general, the over tra the traffic flow is somewhere between 50 and 45 percent reduction mm -hmm. from what was assumed originally. So historically, that's how things came. Everybody knows how the project was submitted with a MEPA permit assumption of high. Then, then the, the permit originally was for 240 units. Then there was an appeal of the project. That, that number dropped to 200 units of residential housing. Then later in this last go around, um, there was an adjustment to remove 24 townhomes from those 200 units um, and, and the medical office building with the parking garage to be replaced with the, a 90-unit assisted living and the lower Vista Park. So the combination of those things has been a significant increase. At the same time, when the permit originally was done, um, it was contemplated as a condominium kind of project predominantly, and it, there wasn't th there was a an acknowledgement that things may sort of go in phases, mm -hmm. and it wasn't sure how <coughs> that was going to happen. So it was going to sort of evolve, and I think the nature of the condition itself was let's have once everything's finally done, 
and, and stabilized, let's look to see where we are. From our current perspective, um, the program of what's being developed is pretty clear uh, what's going to happen. Um, you know, we are, we are months away from trying to get final certificate of occupancy for the residential. The, um, the assisted living um, is expecting to be done by the end of uh, February, certainly by the end of March. Um, and it's very predictable what those traffic flows with those uses from an engineering perspective. And so we also all acknowledge that the that there's some issues with the timing and sequence of the light. It's not functioning well. We've been getting complaints from the, even the residents who've already just moved in, as well as people who are in the area who are going through that intersection a lot. There's, it's just not functioning very well. So we thought it would be better to be a proactive approach rather than wait for the problems and to, to, to go ahead and get this in place now. And I think we've, we have the acknowledgement that there may be some modifications of like moving stripe lines or you know putting some dash lines in to sort of help those things function. There might be some extra motion detectors or some you know things that are in the in the road to sense sensory things to sort of optimize it. In addition to doing the traffic counts at these key intersections um, now under the existing conditions, um, because there's been a lot of change over the time with the project and Mill Street and everything changing, to then say okay once we have all that updated data. What's going to optimize these key intersections on the Mill Street, Summer Street, and the Brattle Street, Brattle Hospital Road, Summer Street intersection, which is sort of like this massive intersection. It's an extended intersection to make sure that the flows are coming through there. Also wanted to do it once the turning lanes uh, were, were done, uh, which they are now um, operable and the islands have been, been put in place. That just happened last week. So um, we also wanted to kind of rush and get the, the traffic count portion of this done before the snow falls. Mm -hmm. and, and we've actually already released the study itself the, for the counts. Um, and we are, um, with, with approvals and things happening today, if we're all understanding what we're doing, we will then release the full engineering study and the scope has been vetted um, with, with Laura and with the TAC. Um, and with our consultant to make sure um, that we're sort of doing what's necessary to make, get, get that information to program to optimize those intersections. So we feel like um, we've, we've gotten good receptivity and a team approach to how to best manage this um, on, on all sides. So we're very appreciative of that. And we think it's, it's better to avoid the problems and get this stuff done now than to wait and then, you know, be, have it be a painful experience for everybody. Rick, anything or? Well, the neighbors, I mean, obviously, having attended a lot of the snack meetings and uh, being a focal point of complaints from the neighbors, um, you know, it is a traffic problem. I think what Jake is proposing here uh, makes a lot of sense, and uh, it was discussed at the last snack meeting. Jake basically laid out what he's saying now, and um, it was I think well it's received. A, uh, yeah, I think it. Uh, <coughs> Right now, you could sit there for a long time, and I did tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 what I'm it's a nice side, but you know, you get a little bored. Exactly. Nice side. <laughs> what I've seen is, and I'm there on a daily basis. I've seen people running the red, even taking the left on it's red, it's left on red. Yeah. So coming out of that site. Um, yeah. So and I think that it is a level of frustration that hopefully this will address. Yeah. So I think what we're asking for is to. Um, sort of have an acknowledgement that we would like to do this proactively, that um, that we will um, try to absorb you know any modifications that come out of the traffic study as part of this mitigation measure, but that once we sort of close that out, I think you know we would like to then put this you know outstanding letter of credit, which was a little bit awkward for the entity that has the place now, where it doesn't really have a letter of credit, it would have to be a cash bond, and we just said let's let's put spend the money, do things the right way the up front, and um, and be proactive about it, but then. Um, the, the other side of it would be we would like to be released to that obligation once all those improvements were done and satisfactory to the TAC. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the town engineer. And the town engineer, yeah. yeah. Bruce? Uh, it sounds like this, this is the right way to go, Jake, and um, I've also heard anecdotally from people who have expressed frustration about the, the sequence or the timing of, of the, the lights there. Um, I just want to make sure I understand the process. So after you finish gathering the information with the traffic, uh, the study with the traffic counts and so on. Um, does the development team formulate the um, uh, the recommended uh, fix or does that go back to TAC? Or yeah, so how I, does that I, it's process a good question. I, I, um, what we're anticipating is the first that the traffic counts happen. 
Mm -hmm. um, so that's just like the empirical data. Um, right. then, then our engineer will go through and sort of match the data, come up with some conclusions and some recommendations <coughs> to, often, to make sure those intersections are working from all different perspectives, not just one way direction on mm -hmm. one street, but that they are you know, in a balanced way functioning as optimally as they can. And then we'll make recommendations, I think, in that report um, to the TAC of sort of what, what should happen. And I think we would review that you know, proactively. We'd get feedback and answer any questions. So I would think we would sort of distribute a draft of that and then come together um, mm -hmm. before it's finalized and, and have some good discourse about it. And, and then, um, you know, in a balanced way, try to put it in and solidify and submit the report for an eventual approval. Uh, but we understand the board's reliance on the TAC for to overviewing these things, and we um, we're very fortunate with the with the depth of knowledge and the expertise that is in that committee. So, um, you know, and I think we've had a very good, um, you know, kind of re re reintroduction reintroduction to the TAC and kind of looking at this, and um, and I think you know we're, we feel pretty comfortable that we can we can get what's accomplished. We don't know what the recommendations are going to be, so I mean, I guess there's like you know if we have to. In a new school or something to make the traffic work. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it, you know, we think you said you do it. <laughs> professionally, you know, there's a lot of mutual respect. So we just feel comfortable that it's the way to go, and it's mm -hmm. going to meet everybody's. Everybody's going to be more satisfied than having um, this pro. And, and there's a safety, you know, factor here with people taking turns that they really shouldn't just out of sheer frustration. So, um, so that's how we would see it, and I think that's what's been discussed with. Um, with the TAC, and, and we're appreciative of them focusing and really, you know, digging in um, to meet the time frames that we're on. Good. Sounds good to me. That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's I think it's an excellent plan to get out ahead of the any problems that might exist, especially for the public safety reasons. So, good. Um, just one one other uh, question. So, uh, with respect to the TAC, did they? Did they end up talking about it at their meeting, or is it just more informally, or how have they yeah. how have they approached this at this point? We had a meeting last Wednesday, right. and I did tell everyone there, and they were okay with yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, uh, that's what's important to me. So um, process wise, um, I guess do we want to take. Carol, what, what were you thinking? Were you thinking of taking a vote? It occurs to me that if you, you could give, you know, have a vote to give them the authority to go ahead with the study and with implementing the changes, what's the important element, uh, how important is it to you that the board vote on the release of the $40,000 now? Um, I think we just would like an understanding yeah. that if we yeah. do the yeah. report okay. proactively and that we follow the recommendations to the satisfaction of the TAC and maybe the town engineer, that the board would consider, you know, a release. Because then later on, once you're all satisfied, then you could have that vote to release. I, I think that's what I would rather do. If you're, if I think you're hearing our comfort level with the plan, yep. so mm -hmm. go for it. You know, we're we're behind it. You know, it's the TAC, and then the other one that I definitely would want on board on what the ultimate plan is, is Wayne, uh, the town engineer, uh, because in the end, he's the one that's going to have to do the, you know, um, uh, rejiggering if it needs yeah. to be done type of thing. So uh, so that's the other important voice that I definitely would want at that point in time. But it sounds sounds like a good plan to all of us, so yeah. I think we're, we're, we're with you on it. Good. It's possible that... that if Good bit of your motion might be found in the um, main body, uh, main paragraph of the proposal. Page two. Yeah. yeah. The developer will implement any improvements unless it's something that's clearly the responsibility of the town, as determined by the town engineer. Yeah, I mean, if Jake, if you're comfortable without us taking a vote tonight, I mean, you only have three of us as well. But I mean, that's fine. We could take a vote. But I'm not sure the vote is, it's going to have so many conditions, you know, mm -hmm. happy to do it. But at the same time, I'm not sure it's going to get you anything in the end uh, because it will be kind of subject to, you know, the report being accepted and right. with respect to the, um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so I guess what I'm trying to think like on our side. Yeah, what are you going to need? Funds to yeah, do what are you going to need? We would like to be able to say what, um, that the board is on board with this plan. <laughs> um, I think maybe a vote of support for this methodology of what we're trying to approach here together and, and then you know, something that's 
soft like that, but I can say, yeah, they're they're on board, and you know, as long as we, we meet these requirements and make these, you know, we've been proactive that they would consider favorably releasing from the pond. That would, might be the best thing to do. Well, yes, making a contribution of money. Um, the, the idea was have a lot of credit available to the town, but if you're going to pay for all the improvements. Um, well, that is what we're saying. We're just we're just saying that we want to make sure it's done right before right. we give the the okay right. and, on and, it, so. and, you know, on our and side, you want it done. We right. want to make sure. Yeah, you, you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, the residents aren't going to be too happy yeah, otherwise. No, so. or, you know, gets to be frankly more than forty thousand dollars. So, <laughs> so w why don't I entertain a motion to? Um, I'm just trying to think of the best way to work. Do you want to take well, a crack? Yeah, I think that the motion would be to endorse the process yes. outlined in the proposal section of Laura Wiener's uh, memorandum dated November 5th of 2013. I like that. Works for me. Well, yeah, he, he, <laughs> is the, he is the motion king. It's like, uh, you know, I'm like, gross. <laughs> Do you have that, Carol? Endorse the process outlined. Thanks for the verb. I was missing the verb. Yeah. Endorse the process outlined. In the, in the proposals, memo. proposals set forth. Section. So yeah. Proposal yeah. section set forth in Laura Wiener's. Or Wiener. That would be my pronouncer. November 5th, 2013. Great. Great. I'll entertain a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. So, Tom, do you want a quick update? That'd be great. Oh, sure. sure. Just some quick hits. Um, <laughs> we are making progress from the sort of aesthetics of, of sort of cleaning up the site and, um, and a lot of progress on the Vista Parks. Um, so the, the lower Vista Park is almost done and just really waiting to, is about to be seeded. Um, the plants have been spread out and are about to be, there's some remaining plants still to be put in the ground, but everything's on site, the grades are done. Um, there's been some discussion because there was some rip wrap out the edges to control erosion and we were doing a similar treatment um, that we did on the other rip wrap slope on our property and that also the shelters done on theirs. We got into an agreement with, um, with um, Christine and with Clarissa Rowe about the seed mix, um, and there were some questions about that. So uh, we feel that we're very close to having the both parks done. Um, the Upper Vista Park, actually, Laura had a chance to get a peek of that today um, when we were looking at bus stop locations, um, is uh, basically 100% done now. Um, oh, and so that has had a, a, a lot of evolution. And um, out, other than a potential bus stop that we're going to be adding at the, at the uh, handicap location, um, we are, you know, feel free to, to go up. It, it is b behind the construction fence, so I'd have to guide you, but we can really show you the finished condition. The, the seeding of the uh, grass has, has now happened, um, and we are hopeful that that can start to germinate and really come in. Um, but the hardscape is in, all the other plants are in, the lighting is in, the new sign is in. The so, historical um, the historical signs are, are in process. I think they've been delivered, but not all of okay. them are installed yet. So, um, and we're very pleased with how that's coming out. So that's that's kind of exciting. Also, just taking down these fences that have been dividing up the, you know, if you come up the road. Um, shelters um, area, the, the facades are going on the building. Uh, the masonry along the front is pretty much all in. The um, clapboard siding and the hardy panels are going in. So every day that's becoming more and more finished in, in its appearance. Um, the street lights are in. We are in some discussions with some of the, um, the abutting neighbors about areas where we're going to look at some options to control the casting, ca the, how the, the light is cast onto the ground, and, and in some cases making sure that they don't go over property lines. Um, there's um, some, some, some new attachments that we're looking at doing that to, to, to facilitate that. Um, um, we are, have accepted all of the townhome B units, so eight of the 12 condominiums now have TCOs, um, and we're expecting the final four A units to be TCO'd by the end of this week. So we've gone through the punch list. There's some exterior punch lists that will be happening, but the interior punch lists have, have basically been accepted. 
Um, and so while you may see some, some patch painting and things like that on the facades of the building, they're done. Um, they're, um, the marketing of those are in full swing. Um, there was a slight price adjustment to a number of the units, um, which has generated um, 50 showings this weekend. So there's some good, good action there. And uh, we're hopeful um, you know, in the good. sales process. Um, uh, the um, townhome D units, which are along the front as you come up the top of the hill, um, we've been able to pull back the construction fencing because the landscaping is basically in, and we're into a punchless process for those uh, those D units, and the C units are coming quickly on the other side. Um, so we're trying to get the fence painting, uh, the painting, exterior painting, um, the landscaping in along along that way, so that um, in there that we do have NEI has their construction office in one of the C units. And we're, um, as those all get done, any eyes, last thing they'll do is pull out of that unit and get, get those things done. So um, um, we are trying to come right along the front with getting TCOs for, for those townhome units. And it really does make a difference, I think, if from a curb appeal as you come up the road, not to have that construction fence um, on the right hand side. And we're trying to get the one on the left hand side done as quickly as possible. That's coming together. So we are looking at a mid to end of December process for completing building which is really the critical path for wrapping up the project. Um, there's still quite a bit of work you know, to go on the interiors and getting those punched out, uh, particularly in the amenity area. Um, and um, we're also very close to finishing up the pool, uh, pool construction on the pool deck. So, um, you know, there's a, more of a finished look that's coming out of this. Um, we are um, jumping in with two feet into the process of completing the um, CR documents. Um, shelter has, has a draft plan that I think that you'll be seeing shortly that is um, an amended plan for the restoration of their marketing center area. And we are investigating having that be part of an exhibit to the final CR that basically shows that that will be done and will be done by some date certain in the future um, that will let shelter determine, but it probably would be in the early summer, we would think. Um, where all of that work was done, the restoration was done, and uh, the coordination there, because we would also like to record the conservation um, restriction, the file, and the management plan for the open space um, as quickly as possible now that these parks are coming online. And we also do need it for condo sales and things, other reasons just to kind of get it all completed. It is a little bit awkward with the shelter still being under construction, but they've made great strides in, in the um, exterior, on the long, particularly on the back side slope with a riprap, they've actually already got their material down. They will have to come back in the spring and do their seeding, but that's pretty much it. So we've been working with them, had conversations today about them suggesting where that final boundary is for the CR. So we have a process with um, that's been outlined with the land trust and the CONCOM for getting a draft plan for where those boundaries, those final boundaries would be. We'd like those to be approved and then we will digitize those with survey to get to the final conservation form agreement that would be recorded. Um, we've engaged our attorneys to engage with Jonathan mm -hmm. Book about um, to recording that. There is an agreement as to form. There's probably some feedback between DCR or the new version of DCR. Um, um, about about that, um, but we do understand from Clarissa Rowe, who's had some discussions with um, um, the folks at the former DCR, the EOO, or the name. E -O -O. DCR is not DCR anymore? No, so, well, that piece of it. <coughs> it's like EAO or something. EOO. Yeah, there's like an A. <laughs> the former, formerly yeah, yeah, known yeah. as DCR. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and there was. Um, some <coughs> discussion about the importance of having the, the screen fencing, the stockade fencing, which was a little contrary to um, DCR, former DCR's um, view of open space and open public accessibility, um, but they understand the urban environment and sort of the role that it's played, and so um, there's good receptivity um, to allowing that, which we think is important from the neighbor's perspective and sort of what's approved and what's been contemplated and the functionality of that fence uh, from a screening perspective. So. Um, we're hopeful to get all of those boundaries established and the document done as quickly as we can because we do see that as one of the last sort of groupings of things that are conditions of approval that, um, as we try to finalize our, our um, final occupancy permits and, and wrap up the project. So those things with the, um, the, uh, the traffic studies, um, we're really trying to get those things done and, and have an aim to get those both wrapped up by the end of the year. And the affordable housing lottery was earlier this evening. Oh, yeah. oh was it? Yeah. There are 45 qualified applicants. 
there were more that applied, but I guess there's a good amount of fallout. <laughs> well, okay, okay, so forth. Yeah, there were probably about 100 applicants altogether, but only four were deemed eligible. Only 40? 40, no, uh, 53, something like that, oh, 54, okay. something like that. Did they do the middle income units as well? Yeah, they didn't look at Did those all fill? No. There's not that, the, the middle income is tricky. It's hard because, you know, if it was ownership, it would have been no problem at all. But at that, it's like 2,500. The rents are like 2,500. They're not that much lower than the, the market rents, and yet there's this income restriction on them. So I don't know. It's going to be tough. Yeah, well, it's going to fill up. Some additional marketing, and I, I did talk to um, our um, our property manager and leasing agents, and they do feel that they see enough people that they can also ask for income information to see if they qualify for the middle. Yeah, that's a good idea, mm -hmm. and that, that they can often fill fill yeah. in that direction. And it just requires mm -hmm. some coordination. Oh, from um, the, from people who think they're applying for walk the through us, yeah, yeah. yeah uh -huh. who actually then do apply, uh -huh. who do qualify. Um, so we'll have to work on a supplemental process, maybe to help out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else we should talk from the board about? I think the fence issue has been very interesting because you've got you know, very different views of it and what the purpose of it is. And, uh, but Jake's been very cooperative and helpful with the neighbors and uh, made some modifications. I mean, you've got, as I said, pulled in many different directions, but I think the development team has been dedicated to try to uh, be reasonable and meet the requirements of both Concom, the land trust, and the neighbors. So mm -hmm. it's been a it's been a challenging process, but it's been a positive process. Yeah, and we're really hopeful that DCR gets on board <laughs> yeah. with what so we've all they understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. yeah, I think Jonathan's aware. I, I've, I've talked to him and actually I saw an email go around today okay. um, trying to get a little bit more, shed a little bit more light. Looks like yeah. he and uh, Gardner Savage have yeah. had a conversation, yeah. and now and now he's reaching out to others. Okay. To so what we're hoping to do is get those boundaries established over the next week or two. But you know, by by after Thanksgiving or early December, we could have that map done, and then yeah. The document together, so. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Anything else? I'll just add. I, I drove through the site on uh, Saturday, and I was very impressed with night. the uh, Lower Vista Park. Yeah. I mean, that really, uh, you know. For a long time, as you were saying, now it's kind of your staging area for uh, construction uh, vehicles and materials, and just to see the, the progress there was was, uh, was 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 terrific. And uh, you know, the rest of the you know, not not the part behind the fence that you can't see, but the part that's accessible really looks yeah, it has a nice feel. It's, it's coming out great. Yeah, yeah. That's a great view too. I mean, even the lower park gives mm -hmm. a nice view of the city. Uh, the evergreens and the plant selection. You can tell a lot of thought was put into this by a lot of different people and uh, the end result's gonna be great. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well, good. Well thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 you. Thank 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 you. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. See you, Thanks, Jake. See you at the rink soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, just to close out on the Arlington 360 uh, update and discussion, one other update is is so they had mentioned Jonathan Book, our uh, uh, our attorney over at Foley Hoag, helping out with the CR. The other thing that I've asked him, I think I mentioned this at a previous meeting to do, is he's going through um, the LDA and. Uh, um, and the special permit to um, basically coordinate all of the different um, pieces of the project, um, all the different requirements uh, within those documents, so that we have an all, kind of an ultimate list of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at prior to uh, final uh, f uh, final certificates of occupancy, so that way when they, they come and ask if the project is done. Uh, which they inevitably will, we can have somewhere where we can kind of look at it, contemplate, and say, okay, they've done these things, and the board feels comfortable, doesn't feel comfortable, whatever our decision is, but we can at least discuss from 
kind of one truth, if you will. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what he's working on now. And I, I should hope I'd have that uh, for everyone, hopefully for the next meeting. Oh, great. Uh, I'm not, okay. I, maybe we'll discuss it at the next meeting. I wouldn't expect it to, you know, do a tick list because mm -hmm. the notion would be is that we would, we would um, have staff help in kind of going through all the different things that have that have happened and with them work through uh, the, the status. list, the status of, yeah. of each item as we go through. So, uh, but with any luck over the course of the next two weeks, we'll get a, we'll get a draft and, and we'll get it up to folks. So Carol will get it up to folks and if you have comments or additions or whatever else, Carol, Carol will collect those and, and make sure that it's edited uh, appropriately and work with uh, Jonathan on that. So, as, as will I, so I'll work with Today's the 18th, so. I think we had December mentioned. 2nd. Remember when we had that conversation with them? I think I maybe uh, sent them a quick email just yeah, saying, "Hey, yeah. how, how how is it looking for the next uh, two weeks?" Because I think this was the two weeks he was talking about when he said uh, he'd be able to get to it. So we gave him a two-week reprieve. He was sounding rather stressed uh, about uh, I don't know what uh, what deal he had in the pipeline, but. Uh, it, it sounded like it was hot and heavy. Just so. working on more than one case? Yeah, hard to believe he wasn't working on ours after a couple of years or whatever. But, you know, I must admit, seeing, seeing as I saw an email come out from him today on the CR, I decided, okay, wait, he's, 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 uh, he's, he's, he's bubbled up. Yeah, he's, exactly. He's ready to dive back in. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's time. So we'll, yeah. we'll hit him up. But hopefully we can get that done in the next couple of weeks and we'll be in a position where we're being proactive. Before and not reactive when the mm -hmm. developer comes. So mm -hmm. that's where I'd like to be. Yeah, so that's great. So, so that's the plan. Uh, anything else on Arlington 360? Anybody? Okay. Good. Well, that's uh, nice. So I think the next thing we're going to move to on the agenda is a discussion of the work tracking report that uh, Carol was kind enough to forward to us. There's a few different things on here that probably. Uh, talk a little bit about. Um, so, Carol, I'll let you go through. Uh, okay. but why don't you All right. Through. The um, first item, Alta Brigham's Mill Street, Minimum Inn Crossing. The special permit for Alta, for the um, Wood Partners development, uh, called for the, a review of the, just like you're, you're looking at the Summer Street traffic signal and timing. You are also um, going to look at the um, Minuteman crossing, the, um, the detectable, the warning lights. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask the board if um, you want to request that TAC undertake a review of, of that, of those lights now to determine whether they're working as expected. Or working at all? Or working. Sometimes they're not working. They're solar powered, and we have had a few incidents, two, maybe three um, incidents, when they weren't working. Um, this, that solar powered aspect wasn't working. And um, the there, there's a lot of, um, you know, through the grapevine comments that we hear too. So I think it would be a good, good, good timing to look at that. It's been in operation for a while now, and to uh, see if TAC, I, I think it's appropriate for um, TAC to determine, you know, with, with public input, I would think, um, whether it's working and if it needs to be adjusted or um, anything else. Makes sense, Bruce. Have there been any adjustments? I seem to recall that um, we might have had a, a, a change on the on the advanced timing of it. I think for a while it was giving like a 20 second uh, warning. If so, in other words, if somebody was if it, it was if it was anticipated that they would be entering the intersection within 20 seconds, then the signal would go off. And my understanding is that was shortened. Do you know if that yes. is actually okay? Yes. So that, I think the back end was too, wasn't it? Like because I think it was flashing for a long time. I thought that. Was oh the yeah, only thing. That, that might have been. In fact, that's I almost remember the back back end was no? I don't it was remember that. Okay, all right. For sure, but I think it was shortened from 20 to 15 seconds. Okay, so we did election. one adjustment already, yeah. but this would be a more of a of a, of a holistic uh, right. look at it. Yeah. Okay. 
they, they have started to do that, but then what they observed was that it didn't seem to be working, and then there was a, they were surmising that the power wasn't working, mm -hmm. then perhaps because it, it wasn't getting adequate sun for the solar panels, but so uh, Wayne is looking into that right now. Like half, he's trying to get the specs for the light. And it's been frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's thrilled with that. But I guess the question is, does it, you know, do we keep trying to adjust it? How long do we keep trying to adjust it? Or I mean, do something new? Yeah. I think that there's a, a one year, the escrow was supposed to be there for a year, and it was put in place in March, so. We have a little bit of time. We have a little bit of time, but not a huge amount of time. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was the intention of TAC to take it up in September, six months after, but um, it's it's been hard to know how to judge it, I think, honestly. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of attempts to, like, people go out and observe it, but, uh, like, what do you record? <laughs> you know, do we record whether stars are stopping when they shouldn't be, or are we, you know, it's, it's just been very um, anecdotal. So, it's, it's challenging for everyone, I think. And if you have any particular things you want them to look at, please do let me know, and I'll add that to the mix. Well, you know, I, I think it sounds like it does need some of our attention and some of tax attention. Uh, so, when do you think tax might be able to to look at it? I mean, I, I I hear what you're saying that they're not quite sure what they're what they should be looking at, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But um, do you think that that would get on their agenda in December? Yeah, it's or? been on the agenda every month. I think okay. right now, maybe I'll. I'll talk to Wayne and find out how long he thinks his piece will take. Because mm -hmm. they don't there's no point in going out and looking at it until it's working. Okay. Right now it's not working. Oh. It's not working well. Apparently it works sporadically. Mm -hmm. So um it wasn't working on Saturday. There you go. <laughs> was it cloudy? It was a little. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I'll try to get or I'll try to Friday. make sure there's some progress by December the December meeting. Okay. Their December meeting. I think the board and tech may want to think about what, what it is we expected um, people to do. Right. Bicyclists and motorists. What, what are people expected to do, and can they reasonably do that with this? Well, where did the idea come from? I mean, where, where I haven't seen this type of arrangement. My recollection is that it came from Bill Scully. No, I, I mean, what other places have something like that? I mean, I've never driven along and seen something that flashes, but oh, you don't see, stop, asking, yeah. you know, yeah. and it, it's just, it's not very intuitive, right? I mean, for either side, I think, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I'm just curious as to, you know, where it's been used successfully. Uh, no place jumps to mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, I think... I always thought that the purpose of it was so that the cars would not stop automatically. They would only stop if there was a bike or a pedestrian coming through, or particularly a pedestrian. They're not really yeah, supposed, supposed to stop, stop for bikes, a bike. but you yeah. always want to check. Yeah. But um, I'm not sure it's doing that. Um, maybe with more experienced people who do it every day are getting it. You know, it, there is an adjustment period. Yeah. I think the tough part is, is is two things. Number one is, is you just don't see them that often, so right. you just don't know right. what to do. I mean, I've gone by that intersection many yeah, times, and right. I'm still not sure. Um, I think the other thing is, is the, although it's obviously in our purview to make sure that you know the traffic mitigation is also like traffic mitigation is working. You know, I, I do think we need to rely heavily on TAC on this one because, I mean, while we can have an opinion on. on my own view is, is you know, certainly we can have an opinion whether I don't think the thing works that well personally. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to hear what Tech has to say of what the goal is and what, you know, whether it's meeting that goal. And then maybe we can talk about whether that goal is 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 the one that we think makes sense. But, you know, as far as meeting a goal, I think it would be hard for us to quantify that type of thing. You know, we will need their help in that type of thing. So um, uh, Andrew, do you have anything? No, I, I kind of so. jumped in there. So. Um, yeah, so I think we'd really like their help to mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what they're trying to do and whether it's doing it 
you know, at some point, I think it would be worth it to bring the, the working group yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be talk great. To you face yeah. that, that would be great. And if we have till March, we have a little bit of time, but let's not play it too close. Right. I don't think the bike path gets used up as much in the winter either. Right, so, so it's going to be a little bit tougher to figure out exactly what's going on. Yeah, I agree. I would hope that we could um, consider hearing from people who have been using it both on uh, on both modes, mm -hmm. all three modes, um, pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists. Mm -hmm. um, there was an the article feedback. in The Advocate about it, written by TAC, and it had my email address for people to make comments. And for a very short period of time, I got comments, but I have not heard anything in quite a while. Okay. And I would say a handful at the most. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things where you, the first time you go by, you're like, what the heck's this? Yeah. And the second time you go by, you're like, well, what, I still don't know what this is, but <laughs> this, is, this is my way of dealing I'm with going. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Well, you know, I'll chime in and say it is confusing, and I, this is, you know, obviously for someone who's supposed to know how it works. Right. Um, but still, when I, you know, approach the, the, the bike crossing there, um, you know, I guess I'm just erring on the side of, of of being as safe as possible and slowing down if not stopping, but um, it's, uh, I guess I, and I agree with what Mike's saying, it's maybe we need to you know, sort of go back and articulate what we want to have happen there, whether we want to stop the traffic or stop the bikes and pedestrians, okay. uh, who yields sense. to whom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've always tack, I say, when I say we, I mean tack in that sentence, um, always thought of this as a possible pilot for the crossing at Lake Street, which is also problematic. Yes, yeah. And um, so, I haven't heard anybody say they want to do the same thing there, yeah. but, but that's, I think they're that's a good point. looking yeah. for options of how to deal with that crossing as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, is, it is a problem. It the is. They're Both busy streets. Are. They're mm -hmm. very busy streets. Yeah. And the bike lane does... And it's going to get busier. And it does back up traffic. Yeah. The bike path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Stopping cars there is, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. Love to I hear what they have back. to say. So you're going to ask Tag, um, what is the what is the take home from this? Uh, I'll find out from Wayne how long he thinks his piece is going to take, and then we'll start doing observations again. But I'll also ask the working group to articulate what their goals were, right? And whether they think it's meeting that goal, right? That would be great. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. And maybe we can find a time to invite them in if, if, uh, if possible. Or should we shoot for um, December? Do you want to do that in December? Um, that'd be good. What, uh, December 2nd, there's a what should be a short um, reopening of a special permit for <laughs> jumping the gun here, getting to the item two on the work track. Yeah, although that says December 12th. So. Oh. No, it's supposed to say the second, excuse me. Yeah, no, that's okay. No, yeah. I just, I realized it when I looked at it. Yeah. Um, so that's a possibility. The following meeting is December 16th, and that's when you have, um, we've scheduled the Master Plan Advisory Committee to come to one of the okay. meetings yep. to hear yeah, Andy's so let's presentation. So, oh. If Andy's available. Right. I think he was at the time. He, he thought he would be. So, so maybe, either of those might maybe the December 2nd one would be good, and yeah. might have a full house on the 16th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even to talk about it, I think a, a conversation about it would be very helpful, you know, just to, you know, that maybe I that's as helpful that as anything. <laughs> so. For the working December group? December 2nd. Okay. Uh, the hearing is scheduled for 7, so. Okay, so 7.30. 7.30, yeah. 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 That's it. And the um, EDR, reopening of the special permit, going to the next item on the work tracking is um, for additional signage at the Shell Station at 934 Mass Ave. That's one at the bottom of Highland? That's right. So moving on, buildings. On that one, just asking, so um, is there application in? Is it in good shape? Or? The application has their... Um, I think it is in good shape. They, it has their um, photo simulation of what they propose. There's a little bit of ambiguity about both. I thought there was some vagueness and the um, 
engineer or, or um, representative for the gas station thought that the special permit was confusing. Um, it's hard to tell. There's some language about the canopy and what was approved. Okay. And so they think they're allowed to have additional signage on the canopy, but we all think it's, it's vague. So we're essentially going to treat it like it's yeah. tabula rasa. Yeah. So I think, it, but but I think it's a complete application. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. You're so with the buildings, um, we are working on a policy update for the evening and weekend use of the central school um, rooms and the Jefferson Cutter House community room. Uh, you may be aware that. A lot of boards, committees, commissions, um, independent groups from Arlington and the region um, use these, uh, especially the central school building rooms, quite heavily. And to date, it's not staffed, and it's created a number of problems. So we're working on a policy for um, creating a reasonable rate schedule so that we can get someone into the building who can be on site in the evening and weekends when the building is used by the public. Uh, this will include for possible private rentals um, for parties, but it's really to um, address the need to have someone managing the use of the building um, they, during evenings and weekends. Yeah, off, hours. Um, yeah. off hours. There are <laughs> three spaces that are used um, by groups, individuals, clubs, um, boards, committees, commissions. So it it can be a lot of traffic, and um, it can create security problems. It has in the past. I think those have abated a little, but um, we still have some um, insecurity about security. <laughs> <laughs> Doors getting propped open, and people um, using the the building, and no one really knowing. They got in, or what? Yeah. <laughs> or or what? Uh, there's been some very good collaboration about um, trying to work on an updated policy for evening and weekend use of both buildings. I think we will, we are looking at a rate schedule. Um, I'd like the board, I'd like to hear from the board about whether you want to get into the nitty-gritty on that, or if you are satisfied with leaving that to staff um, to work out. Yeah, we've, we've met a couple times um, to try to make it more um, structured and uh, make it more like what's happening with uh, the, what Patsy's doing with um, the, the town, both the town hall and, and uh, uh, Wilmer Robbins and, mm -hmm. and those types of things. Um, so it's 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 about a um, little bit about cost, but it's also about scheduling and making mm -hmm. sure that you know folks have to um, uh, schedule their time in that building, so we know who's coming in, and that way uh, this person uh, who will be kind of supervising some of these off-hour activities will know who should be in and who should. It's a little bit of a wild wild west feeling right now, I think. So uh, I'm trying to get a little bit of structure on that. So. So we, so um, uh, several folks in this group have put together some fees and that type of thing, and, and Carol and I were just talking about it today. I've held it up a little bit, but um, we were wondering about the board's thoughts on looking at the fees or whether the board's uh, comfortable delegating to to staff and, and the other folks working on those fees. Um, uh, and for information, the folks are yes, uh, yeah. Assistant town manager, deputy town manager, um, the director of health and human services, who is the department head for a department in in, in the, the building, building. Mm -hmm. uh, nine, you know, eight to four, and, and has the distinction of being witness to and referee to a lot of what's been going on. So, Pat is uniquely qualified to participate in this. Uh, Patsy Kramer's advised. Um, Leaving out a bunch of people. Joey has invited Joey Koshko mm -hmm. from the Michael. planning department, and yeah. Mike Byte Bowden, who is the management analyst and the town mm -hmm. manager's staff. So we're we're really rolling up our 
generous leaders yeah. than us. And trying to come up with something that's fair, reasonable, easy to implement. Well, that sounds good. I don't think you necessarily have to, you know, come back to the board for the rate schedule. I think that there's okay. uh, an adequate, you know, more than adequate process in place to uh, look after the town's interest with respect to both uh, economic return and, and scheduling and, and security. So, mm -hmm. commend you for your efforts. I think it's it's a it's a it's a good thing that you're doing. And, Personally, I don't think you need to come back to say, okay, here's the rate schedule, approve it or, or not. Any change in policy creates some growing pains. So I also yeah. want the, to avoid the board, to be the aware. board having to, uh, I want you to be aware, but I also don't want you to have uh, be sidelined by you know, going to the grocery store to check out and having mm -hmm. um, anyone... Well, it will happen regardless. Yeah, so, it, but, it, but it's, it's be, good for you to be aware. It'll be a shakeout period. Um, yeah. I think some people yeah. who aren't. Just any, a, any time there's a new policy, people. It, it takes some getting used to. So. Uh, how does the scheduling work currently? We have a book. It's very um, 19th century. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a, a book, something like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's a calendar. It's just a, a calendar. and. But it uh, doesn't have all the users. No, it doesn't. And no. A lot of users it's only have. It's um, There's kind of a down home quality to this yeah. where people yeah. have just. They've been going people, there for years just, and they yeah. just keep going there. Oh, okay. They're there every so. Tuesday. Yep, yeah. they're every Tuesday. Um, so other people will go through the reservation procedure and um, it takes a lot of coordinating, mm -hmm. um, even on the reservation and uh, not just the on site at the moment. Um, and so we think it will get people into a better groove. And sure, they'll start to think in terms of recurring, you know, at times that they want the space and, and, and you know a cost to it. Formalizing, and formalizing the side exactly. And have a better so. quality experience too. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that is the idea. Storming in here. Well, or you, you go to a room that you thought you had, and exactly. there yeah. you go. There's another groove. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there is a demand for an additional space for private celebrations that isn't as formal and grand as um, either the Woodmore Robbins House or, or the auditorium. So uh, there's there's some potential to provide that service to the community there as well. But like I said, even for just meetings or groups, we, we need to manage it in a way where um, we have some, we're, we're managing it responsibly and in a, in a way where people's security is Yeah, sure. I think that's a huge, huge yeah. issue, is, is people's security, yeah. because you just don't know who's coming and going at this point, so. In this weird way, we will have a much better expectation mm -hmm. um, of what people can expect. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully the days of propping open doors will be a little bit fewer, so. Yeah, um, because I do hope so. That is, that is a concern. Um. I don't, I'm just looking to see if I, I rec recalled um, putting the paving in. Christine Sapinski had asked uh, yes, to, yes. me to update you yeah, on. Please. Last week, Christine presented to the chair of the Historic Districts Commission and the Historical Commission on a very, very cold day. Um, God bless her. Uh, the concept for repaving around the Central School yep. site that um, Andrew, I don't know if you <coughs> have heard about this, but yeah. no, not yet. It, it, the, the, the site would, um, right now there's a lot of heaved brick. Mm -hmm. So the intent is to try to recognize that it's an historic district, but also come up with a smoother um, surface in some parts of the site. And Christine is a landscape architect, mm -hmm. and so she's developed a a concept that I think the board supports, and she wanted to get the Historical Commission and Historic District Commission to hear about it and to um, give her any feedback. And, uh, so I think that they generally were supportive. They're, they were interested in trying to keep brick on the driveway from Maple Street into the parking. The, the 
this really? would be the facade that's the east facade. No, not both of them necessarily. Not the circle, but the, but the straightaway. Right, right. And, and it was more like, is there some way? That, so I think, Christine, I, I left them um, at one point when they were it had kind of all almost gone around the building, so I can't tell you exactly how Christine left that with them or how they left it with her. Um, but that that was the purpose is to to hear hear their input. Um, I think the board has to make a decision with input from all. You know, all when I say all, I mean I think Jack Jones is important to this and the historical commission, the historic districts commission. It is in a historic district. Um, so that's, I, I think that's generally where we are. I think um, there was good discussion. Uh, I think they understand well at this point what the, the concept, what the proposal is. So uh, it's time now for Christine and I to sit down and see how they left it and to determine how, um, how the board should uh, proceed. Do you, do you think we'd get anything before, once you sit down and do that, would you then um, propose something to them before coming back here, uh, that way to get their input as to you know, what it is you're thinking? Think Christine would try to... Um, and get something somewhat formal from them? To try to revise the sketch a bit and work out with with them a little okay. bit before coming back to you. That's what I, not, at least that's what be, I would recommend. Yeah, it might not be that bad a thing to do that. So yeah, that way we do can a little bit of um, get a little back and forth offline, and then come to you with something that's fully baked. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, because that way we would understand what would kind of be okay with them. Yeah. That'd be a good thing. Yeah. So it will be good. We'll get there. Okay. Great. Yeah. And she's um, she's been working really hard on it. Yeah, along um, with everything else, with Sims and everything yeah, else, so she's yeah. being a workhorse. That's for sure. Uh, 23 Maple Street, um, you know that there was a, I think you don't know, Andrew, but um, it is the white mansard um, building right next to the Central School. Mm -hmm. It was at one time the superintendent's office for the school system years and years ago. and. It's owned by the town. The ARB um, leases it to Northeast Family Institute, and it's been out of um, lease. It's been out of uh, lease for a while, so we have to do an RFP for that. They also um, we did a lot of work to get specifications for restoring and repairing the porch and other entryways, but the bids came in too low. I mean, too high for the amount we had budgeted. I was going to say, <laughs> low. <laughs> Gee, those bids, they just... Do them twice. <laughs> <laughs> they do so much more work. So, um, and there are some interior changes that the tenant feels are Needed. more advantageous for oh. them and okay. that, that are higher priority. So juggling things around, um, I think that's going to be postponed, pushed out to an out year. So if you're wondering how come that work isn't proceeding, it's, um, I think there's more important, higher priority work to do on the inside, and we'll wait until some other um, building capital needs are addressed in other buildings and come back to that. And we do, we do need to um, undertake some RFPs for a few spaces. We also will be, I hope, hearing from the state soon about whether they are going to issue an RFP of their own for the two state mental health organizations that lease building space in the Central School. Um, a couple years ago, they issued an RFP and then withdrew. Um, so at that time, they only extended our lease with their tenants for two years, and that's coming due June of 2014. So they're going to act. I, I'm, I called them to ask, um, yeah, what's going you on? know, tip your hand, yeah. tell me when, yeah. when you're going to send this out, but did not have a call back. So um, I also have to alert the selectman's office because that is not going to come to me, chances are. It's, right. Okay. And it might take some time for it to be routed. So. Now, are these different things, are they 
other things that my father was helping me with, or who, who wasn't there someone who was going to help with the RFPs, or uh, was it Mike? Or Mike is doing a lot with the RFPs, for, okay. but really uh, focusing on the buildings that are the town meeting had moved into okay. board of selectmen or general the town manager's jurisdiction. Uh, he, I'm sure he will be. Yeah, if he's getting, you know, given help on yeah, the other RFPs. That'd be great. Maybe and we could get on his list. Yeah, he is um, staying on top of the um, schools for children lease at the Central School, for example. So, um, yeah, I'm getting a good help from him. He's very good. capable, and um, it's seems. been a big improvement since right. he came on board. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm happy to ask too. So. Okay. Just making a note to be sure we look, ask the selectman's office to look for those RFPs. Okay, so uh, Jefferson Cutter House, before we leave the buildings item, the Jefferson Cutter House uh, needs a lot of work right now. We, I'm hopeful that we can get a full building assessment done. Um, there was some rot in uh, the east elevation up near uh, Gutter, and it actually went into the building. This is right. Opening into the building, and there are some very a lot of soft spots in that facade. And there's I won't go into all of it, but it's it's urgent that we have an assessment done and go on a program of priority repairs and then a regular maintenance program um, for that building. So, ARV master plan? Should we move on? Sure, please. We are at the phase of the progress, the project of existing conditions reports. The consulting team has prepared almost all of the existing condition reports and presented them at a November 7th workshop. Mm -hmm. um, about we had about 65 people. That's a good attempt. Um, and thank you for those of you who uh, attended. That was, um, I thought, a really good turnout. We are still um, waiting for the land use and natural resources reports from RKG. The comment period was to close November 22nd on the baseline reports, on the existing condition reports. I'm considering holding all of the comment, the comment period for all of the reports open until sometime in early December, because land use and natural resources, right. you want to give people some time you, to respond yeah. to those. And right? you don't want to close other things when you have those open. So. Yeah, I want to be consistent yeah. and not confuse the public. So uh, that's my hope. I We have to try to stay on schedule as well, but I, right. I don't want to shortchange the um, public's opportunity to comment. One thing that I, I learned from this uh, workshop was that uh, we have to do staff, consulting team, master plan advisory committee, have to do a better job of explaining what the master plan is and isn't. So mm -hmm. that was enlightening to me. Uh, right. right. Did you find that? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think there was some confusion as to what goals are versus, you know, um, the, the different pieces, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what, what part of it, you know, uh, what you were <laughs> presenting, you know, it wasn't the master plan. Yeah. That, I think that's. That's the issue is is understanding and and you know maybe it's even diagrammatic you know that you you mm -hmm. show okay where you, you pack gathering you know and mm -hmm. goal setting which is you know make a pyramid it's way up here and then implementation is you know way down here yeah. and in between you have and because, where are we on that pyramid yeah, exactly and, yeah. and and we're just kind of scratching the surface at this point maybe it's an iceberg right everything yeah. else is underneath um, I but, I think it comes from a good place I think everyone eager and engaged and committed to where the town is going. So I think that um, might translate into some anxiety <laughs> or fear even mm -hmm. about I think that's that right. the baseline reports might be the plan. So I have to do a little more reassurance on what comes after this so people know that this is, this is just almost scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. But also to make clear um, that it's focused on land use and physical development and not other valuable and important things that go on in this community, and why it's focused on land use and physical development. So, um, Laura has arranged um, for us 
Charlie Palaskis and Monica Tibbetts, not the two co-chairs, uh, and I believe Judy is Judy coming. She's not going to be at the okay. cable yeah. program. She's not going to be on the program. That's right. But you are. Yeah. And, and right. you Don't are. forget you. Know, don't forget you're, you're going to be on TV. <laughs> so I think that's a good opportunity to try to clarify some of this a little bit and to explain. Maybe we'll do a pyramid diagram for a graphic. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know. So it it was um it, it was interesting and uh, quite a ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ride has just begun. And it's just too. begun. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that would be important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Christine is um. Your liaison to the Master Plan Advisory Committee, and Joe Kiro is the Board of Selectmen's liaison okay. at this point, and they're um, they're fully engaged. Yeah, fully engaged. Yeah. 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 I sat with Joe at the uh, at the event. Oh, and good. Was, you know, you can see he put a lot of work into it. Great. Who moderated your t your roundtable? Uh, Pam. Pam Hale. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, good we are waiting. Two members have yet to get their notes back. I didn't compile my notes until today. Myself, so it'll be good to get those compiled in. in, in. <coughs> so, economic development. Ted Fields, your former colleague on the board, has been uh, working as economic development planner since April. And um, about a month ago, Ted hosted uh, something we've been trying to do for some time a kind of a summit on business incubators and shared workspaces. It was uh, intended for commercial property owners and people who are looking for s shared workspaces. And people who uh, have done this kind of thing were the panelists. Or, and, and the panel, I thought, was um, very interesting. And it was very well received. And it was good for, net for them to network together. I think it was very helpful for the commercial property owners and a broker or two to hear why property owners do this and how it's done and how different it is from another model that they're accustomed to. So that was um, that made good sense um, and I think it was a good good project that Ted did. We're going to try to look at some other sectors of Arlington's economy to try to measure the economic impact. Um, the existing economy and gauge the potential and look at trends. Are, are, for example, is a sector on the rise or is it on the decline or how strong how strong is it? Um, we also have a study coming out soon that I commissioned with um, Margaret Collins on the economic impact of the theaters on their respective commercial districts to try to measure what kind of an economic um, ripple effect we get to the other businesses from having those um, mm -hmm. those uses stay viable in those districts. So that will be out very soon. And there's a f another thing that I'm going to have to return to when it comes back into my mind. So I can move on to Millbrook unless you've got questions. Right, no, that's okay. Okay. That one is uh, December 16th, the folks from the... Yeah, I'm going to check with Andy to see if okay. he still thinks he's um, going to be available. We may also submit a grant. Right now, the um, Metropolitan Area Planning Council has some small grants for wellness. Uh, there's a list of six ways in which they want um, grant applications to consider increasing um, health and wellness in communities, and one is through uh, review of zoning codes. Hmm. And we may look at um, what could be done to create incentives to link to the Millbrook or to create um, in Arlington, it would usually be a walking experience to connect, or biking experience to connect the Millbrook um, or to enhance connections between Brook, the Minuteman, and Mass Ave. We don't expect people to be kayaking on the I was about to say right? whitewater water rafting. But, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I say, um, sailing. sailing. Like if someone is um, on the bike path. Culvert. <laughs> <laughs> if someone's on the bike path, they may um, it may be a like a stop um, uh, and, and look at the look at the brook kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So the deadline's next week. And about it fairly recently, so we'll see what we can do about that. But that could be good. That could help um, 
uh, contribute to uh, the master plan as well. East Darlington, Mass Ave rebuild. Um, well, we're sort of in a, a, a trough right now. I don't know. If, if, like, there's not very much going on in town related to it, but at Mass Ave, it's out to bid, and they are waiting to get bids in. Um, what we've been trying to focus on is how to communicate with the residents and the businesses and, and people driving through to um, let them know what's going on, what to expect. Um, so we're working on a communication strategy and there's been some discussion about possibly the town having something similar to a, a designated town rep to represent oh, us okay. to work with Mass yeah, Dive. That probably doesn't make sense. Yeah. We're not there yet, quite yet, but... Um, those are things we're working on. And there's been, it's been very quiet, actually, except for the easements. It's been very busy. <laughs> People wanting their checks. Yeah, sure. Okay. Website, are we taking the picture tonight? You snooze, you lose. That's what I said. We don't have a full computer. That's what I'm saying, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will if you want to, but yeah, exactly. um, <clears throat> misrepresentation. Yeah. <laughs> we are... Um, Preparing for uh, Photoshop. I mean. We're getting a new website. I don't know if you were. Oh no! It. Yeah, we're no. It. Oh, the whole okay. town. Yes. Not just us, right? Not just <laughs> the redevelopment board, but we're going to a different vendor, and Joan Roman's been working with department heads and um, IT on a new look, um, using getting a lot of feedback there. Um, so that will also be a, an opportune time for us to. Um, Review what we are saying about the redevelopment board and uh, yeah. post uh, the, the EDR applications, which was done That's at right. one time. Yeah. We haven't mm -hmm. done that for a long time. Just have better communication and post more information uh, about the redevelopment board. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to be great. Uh, early next year. Early next year. Yeah. Okay. And just to review the, um, please, uh, let's run down this list of ARB liaison. And if I have anything incorrect here or uh, omissions, let me know. I know, I know you're missing one. Okay, which one? Unfortunately, it's me. Oh, um, I, I wondered what that looked like. Yeah, <laughs> tourism, tourism and economic development. Okay. I wondered if we had, I had that on another um, document, but I wasn't sure if that was current. Okay. Master plan is Christine. Open space is Christine and Andy West. Vision 2020 Standing Committee, Bruce Fitzsimmons, Millbrook, Christine Sapinski. Oh, that's oh, that's not a duplicate. Um, okay. Yeah. When when Christine Christine was no, I think Ted was tourism and economic development, and then when he left it that over, I think. But then I think when Christine went on to the master plan, weren't we going to take her off of the other two because it was going to be so time consuming? So time consuming. And I think the new member was going to maybe take her place on that. On so open space? On uh, or, or I think on on all but master plan, yeah, was the notion. So I don't know, Andrew, if that is amenable to you, but No, it's fine. Uh, okay. That, that might make the most sense because yeah. it is time consuming. I mean, and she'll probably, when the master plan is done, she'll probably arm wrestle you for <laughs> space and the, uh, uh, and the mill brook. I'll find a new spot at that point. Exactly. <laughs> Happy a little to give you time still. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, you got to wait. So maybe that. And I don't, do we have to take votes on those? Can I? No, you just appoint. The point? Yeah, that's, I think. All right, except if you the sword <laughs> will go right on the shoulder with the blunt end of the sword. Um, yeah, so I think that would be good because I think that was the deal we cut when we all took a step backwards and had uh, Christine take the uh, master plan. Liaison. And zoning bylaw amendments. So the only one I know that was. Smiling because out. our list actually goes from A to Z. On our work track. Ah, yes, that's true. <laughs> You're right. Uh, so, the one that will be coming up, as I think everyone realizes, I, I think with the master plan ongoing, um, that I think we've, unless something comes up that needs it, 
um, I don't think we were going to try to work too many zoning bylaw amendments as we go through the master plan process. However, one of the ones that we do have to work through is the um, medical marijuana um, mm -hmm. uh, the dispensers. So I think those will be coming up at some point. Yeah. Um, I met with Adam a few weeks back and we talked a little bit about it and uh, he's starting the process of, okay. of, of going through and figuring it out. Cambridge, I think, is the only community on our borders to have mapped where they intend to put their um, medical marijuana dispensaries. And one of them is close, not touching our border, but very close to it in North Cambridge. Um, I only mention that because I think that if I'm trying to decide where they should be in Arlington, I think we are going to want to look to see where they are in our budding communities, just so they're not all clustered together. Yeah. So beyond that, I, I don't have anything more to report yet. We'll get there. I yeah. don't think Arlington is as panic-stricken about it um, as some other communities are. No, I think we just want to make sure that we get good input from, obviously, uh, Chief, Everyone Chief Ryan. Everyone yeah, Exactly, and mm -hmm. everybody else uh, as we go through. Because I think that'll be important for town meeting. So, to be able to go in there with some good uh, um, support from the different departments. And clear understanding. Clear understanding. Um, hopeful that we can yep. do everything possible to make clear what, what the zoning is trying to do, has to do, exactly. isn't doing. And, exactly. Um, and what so. it can't do. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Anything um, you thought you'd hear about that we didn't touch on? Not me. No. Okay. Buffer, that's it. Yes, very right. much. Thank you. Thanks you're welcome. My pleasure. You. Speaking of thank you, <clears throat> Thank you for the board minutes. So oh, you're welcome. <laughs> that is, um, that's the next item on the agenda, is to approve, I think, four oh, sets. Pretty much up to date. Almost. 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 Um, Very close. Um, so I'm going to work through um, oldest to most recent. So the first one I have is May 6, 2013. Bruce? Oh, yeah. You don't want to see this. Yeah, Laura. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Laura. I have a question on, on this. The start time, was that 7.30 or 7 p.m.? Oh, you know what? I think, were we in the first floor conference? I will look into that. I think we're probably second floor. Six. Because that would have been. We haven't met in the first floor conference room. I can't ever remember. I mean, we've yeah. met Not at the. with Wood Partners. We did with. Um, no, it was up here. Was up this here. meeting was yeah, up here. Yeah, this meeting was up here. And um, I, I'm pretty sure it was 7 o'clock because we had to leave uh, by 8 for, for the uh, town meeting. meeting. <coughs> yeah. That's a big catch. And then the uh, only other thing I had was. Um, it looks like we might have had a, might need to add a list of materials that were reviewed. Um, Christine's exhibits for the um, for the, um, yeah, the central the central school, school and right, then right. whatever Wood Partners and Twenty Two Mill Street might have been showing us for Chris signs. Nice. So. I didn't have anything else, so I guess I'll have a little second this one. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One abstention. <laughs> Getting closer to where you are, Andrew. Yep. Closer. Every week there's one at least. Exactly. And I'll soon, <coughs> soon enough know. Go to June 10th next. Just uh, give me a thumbs up when you're ready, Carol. All right, go ahead. Okay. June 24th, you said? Uh, June 10th. Oops. Okay. 
the ones I don't need my reading glasses for. Okay. Like this. I'm sorry. Take a moment here. Do you want to borrow mine? I must have them. Actually, since I'm upstairs. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You're going to take the yeah, yeah, I don't have those. Thank you. Okay, so on uh, top of page two, that first full sentence is actually repeating the uh, second half of the preceding sentence. So I think you can strike Mr. West being authorized to modify the green color, etc. All the way down to applicant. All the way down to applicant, right? Okay. And then the only other thing I had was uh, in that same section at the top of page two, um, there's a line that begins with the word tree planting. Can you see that? It's maybe about the tenth line or so down. Tree planting for screening. The same box? The same in the same paragraph. box, right. Yeah, you see Arlington 360 kind of in the middle there. It's the line right yes. under Arlington okay. 360. Yeah, so in the um, following line, the word is should be struck. I guess in context you don't need it there. Tree planting for screening is difficult. It should just be tree screen. Tree planting for screening is difficult. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. The, the only other thing I had was on the first page, Carol. Uh, it's silly, but um, the, the second paragraph, um, just right before this big um, space right here, it says uh, dimensions and colors as shown instead of show. Okay. You see that? Um, yes. That's no big deal, but. Nope, that's a big correction. All right. Okay. Move to approve has, am has amended. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Moving right along. Motion carried. Now we're on to June 24th. So in rope stand, right? Yes. Okay. Right. I think you really are almost here now. Not quite. June 24th. Okay. Um, I have a question on the vote at the end of page one, bottom of page one. Um, do we need to state who moved and who seconded? I don't know that you do. Okay. Yeah. I've been told you don't. I, don't think I so. usually do if I have it. Okay. Just for information. Okay. And we're okay on that. Okay. And uh, Mike, I'll defer to you. I actually, I don't know if I uh, fell asleep halfway through the meeting there, but on uh, page two, I didn't remember Ted making a presentation about the uh, yeah. side and facade program. Yeah. He was here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my, yeah. My we bad. welcomed him back. Yeah, I didn't yeah. remember that one. Okay. No, actually, okay. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's, that usually, was it. that's usually right out of my. Uh, that's, that's usually my uh, my my thing. Um, you know, the only the only thing I have is that um, I don't think I would have seconded just because I think I was the chair by no 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 was I? Yeah, I was because on June sixth yeah, you opened chair, the meeting. So, yeah. so I opened the meeting. So just in this vote right here, I think it was Andy who seconded. As stupid as it sounds, uh, the first oh, yeah. page, okay. just Mr. the big box. West Mr. West, Mr. West seconded. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I actually have something. I oh, okay. That is so funny. Okay. You may have already checked it, but I, I needed a little help with this one on the second page, um, middle of the um, text agenda item for the Housing Corporation of Arlington yeah. yeah. Lease. That doesn't seem very cogent. <laughs> you know, I think it's okay. Um, Did it make sense to you when you read it? Yeah, nine hundred forty-one per month. Well, now 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 will increase. Gross per month is fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one per square foot. Gross per year, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, there is that. Yeah. Gross per year. Um, you know, you could say uh, gross per year will increase annually from. Right. Yeah. That's. Will increase annually. From 15 to yeah, 17. from the exact, or you can just say 15, 17. I think you can keep it the okay. way it is. I think I think you just want to say that these are the annual okay. increases. And I think I'm okay with it. Uh, if, with that, yeah, I think that's what. Yeah, you know, I think you can figure it out. Okay. 
So I will move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You're in. <laughs> All right. Make it count. Make it count, Andrew. You get first crack. <laughs> Uh, in the third line down where it says document used, Alan and Major site plan, I think Major needs to be capitalized. Thank you. Yep. And then the same error in the vote. Oh, yeah. Yes. And just one question there in the vote. Do we need to say how many parking spaces we are reducing from 267, or is that not? Probably not a bad idea. You could say from 68 to 67. Or reduce parking spaces by one. By one. Yeah, if that's what you have. I think that's all I caught. Good. Good. Good catch. I have one catch. Um, the uh, third paragraph from the bottom of page one, mm -hmm. just the date, September 19th, uh, ah, 2013. Good eye. <laughs> I know we're forward Recent thinking part. hard. <laughs> well, you know what? Here's the, here's the funny part. I have the same comment, but it's the third paragraph down that uh, you corrected the M in major. Oh, that's but so it's right there. Right. I did it again. I will be in my flying car by then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a monogram. Exactly. Well, if the master plan is successful, will be, we'll plan that far out. I will yeah. still be 37. I will be in my flying I got car. Down fast now. <laughs> there you go. A monorail. <laughs> Uh, so nothing line. on the second page? Oh, second. Uh, oh. Okay. I don't think I have anything. Yeah. Right. Um, Move to approve. Wow, look at that. Yeah. He's moving to approve. Andrew's moving to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other new business? Oh. Yes? Yeah, November 4th, 2013. Okay. So close. So recent, it threw me off. <laughs> it can't be. Carol, no, no work. Carol, do you Carol. have minutes from tonight ready yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on the technology. <laughs> I actually, it's interesting you bring that up. I think from now on, I'm going to try to, um, if you are willing to go on this adventure with me, to, to actually stop us every once in a while to get information from applicants um, to kind of do the minutes while we're in the proceedings to uh -huh. actually well, phrase them that way. I think mm -hmm. it'll be faster in the long run for everyone. So we'll try it if we'll see how it goes. I do that somewhat anyway already, but I'm just gonna do it a little more yeah. formally. Sounds good to me. Sure. Okay. Are you looking for another, another motion? Another motion. Okay. Okay. A motion came. Uh, yes, go for it. Move to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.